The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman here on this Monday, the 7th of February. Um, it's going to be interesting, first full week of this month, February, coming up. And a lot of things, I, I, when I did my overview for my subscribers on Saturday, uh, it was just quite, quite a lengthy one. It was a, a little bit more detailed and I, I wanted to talk about my emotion. I, try, I usually try to talk about this purely in technical terms. And what I was saying is, let's just go to the Dow right now. We've got the E-mini at a, at a peak. E pulls back to the 200 period moving average, running a little bit here in the one-minute chart. The E-mini S&P went to a leg F in the 10-minute uh, chart. That could turn out to be a brand new leg A, so it's F slash A. Uh, back again onto its 200 period moving average of support. And this is what I was saying to subscribers. Uh, to my opening call, my daily newsletter. On the one hand, I'm, I feel extremely bullish in the sense that when you think about the decline, you're hardly seeing any talk about it at all now. Of course, when, when, when the coronavirus, all the effects and effects of that were skyrocketing and the hospitals were seeing um, lots and lots and lots of patients and using up hospital beds. Um, the reality was that the general public were just starting, to, first of all, they were getting tired, tired of the whole thing. Of course, you should never get tired of something just because you're getting tired of it. You've got to do some assessment. But at the same time, the, 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 activities that are outdoors, and that would include indoor like restaurants, but moving outdoors to do it. And when I'm looking at the jets, which is the US airline index, holding so nicely above the low that was made on the 24th, round about in the low 19s, and now we're at the 21.55, that also has to do with the uh, takeover or discussion in the airline index. I, when I'm trying to put this together, I'm saying to myself, this spring and summer should be hugely bullish for the general market. And then I started to say, wait a minute, are you talking about that as an emotional thing or a technical thing? Because if you're looking at Ford down sharply from the 25.87 high of the 13th of January down to Friday's low, um, under 18, that's talking about the shortages. If you're talking about General Motors, that's serious stuff. So how do you put the two together? I mean, talking about a dichotomy, talking about uh, the yin and the yang, I, that's really tough. All I can say is looking at some stocks, looking at, and we're going to use Disney as I've spoken about for a while, that Disney surely... Uh, Yes, there's a media component to it. So in a sense, it's not purely just outdoor activities. But if Disney comes out with earnings, not so much the earnings, if the outlook is to say that I'm just not, I'm not using Disney as a stock that you want to buy or sell or do anything. I'm just saying as just some kind of a barometer, it's had a tremendous pullback from 203 down to the low of the 24th of January to 129.26. Let me just type that in. 129.26. It's had a pretty nice bounce to the 142 area. That's 13 points, about 10%. That's nothing if you're looking at the weekly and the monthly charts. But if all of a sudden we're starting to see towards the third or fourth week of February that Disney kind of in a way is a, it's just... It's an icon rather than a benchmark. It's just something that we should keep our eye on. But if it starts to move towards the 149, 151 area without coming back and retesting, say, 135 in the interim period on a closing basis, I think we're starting to see the signs that say, you know what? All those people talking about a multi-year declines, etc., um, they might have to factor in 
something else, and that something else has to be why on earth is it, oops, is the semiconductor index, the SMHs, remember on Monday I like to talk a little bit about our overview for the week. So the SMHs, which is the semiconductor, uh, the market vectors, semiconductor ETF, trading from 300, the 318 area all time highs down to 249, that's, yeah, 60 points and 70 points. That, that's a big decline. And it's in a bear, it's in a, it's in a bear, technical bear phase in the daily and weekly. It's in a sell mode in the daily and weekly. I haven't yet been able to commit in the monthly chart. I have to wait for the whole of February before I can say what it is in the monthly chart. But this is telling us that things are not all just hunky-dory. So, wow, all of a sudden I'm talking about, I, this is, could be the, one of the greatest springboards to the upside. And then on the other side, I said, well, wait a minute. There are some things going on here. That's the reality. So now I'm going right back to my box and I'm saying, we're trying to be very selective. We've got positions. We've missed a couple of positions that were absolutely really perfect. I just, I have fairly tight stops. We got stopped out and didn't get back in. We have to just deal with that. We've had some really great gains. I don't want to give up some of those gains because some of those stocks are still acting really well. They look like they could be part of any new phase to the upside. I'm looking at the IAI, the uh, iShares Broker Dealer and Security ETF. All-time high on the 2nd of November. This is now the 7th of February. So we've got all of November, all of December, all of January, and we've just started February. So we've got over three months and you've gone from 116 down to 104. That's what, 12 points is 10% correction. Um, then it rallies back to the 115-ish area. And then it tumbles down to the last low, which I forgot to type in. How could I have forgotten that? Uh, which was the low of the 24th of January at 98.89. Well... 98.89 is certainly, 24, 22, is certainly a whopper of a decline from the three, uh, from, sorry, from the 118s. And now we, here we are. Uh, it's 30 point, that, yeah, that's a big move. So now what we're talking about is it hit the 200 period moving average a number of times. It's running very sharply. It's actually pretty well. It's up today, up 17 cents at 110.20. It's in leg C. Uh, this is this is pretty good action. But if you look at the the, the month, sorry, if you look at the weekly chart, I have to consider that it went to a sell mode. There's a chance that it could be just triggering a, a buy signal. That'll be the daily chart, almost at, at leg D. Um, and that would help the weekly chart. And I'm trying to put this together and I'm saying, why on earth would, if this is really a, a, a terrible um, recession type thing, why on earth is the IE shares of the broker dealer ETF, the IAI, well off the low, up, uh, what, 12 points from the low, up over 10, 11% off the low? in the middle of the range, closer to the highs, um, if there's really a, a recession going on. And all I can say is this is a, a, a trifurcated market. You've got to be really careful. There are some sectors that have been fantastic and others are just maybe hammered. I'll be back in a moment. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network at CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE and you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. We're back. And a very good comment in the den. Uh, basically saying, historically, Fed tightening at some point squashes stocks. Yep, that, there's no question about that. Here's the other thing. The market, you know, everyone says the market hates uncertainty. My expression for decades has been, what are you talking about? Every day the market's dealing with uncertainty. What the market hates is uncertainty about uncertainty. You've got to be once removed and then you've got a problem. And that's kind of what we're looking at in a way here. And not only that, look, the VIX index, the volatility index, trading uh, up 29 cents to 23.47. Technically, if we're going to get a really strong rebound, you want to see the VIX index under the 200 period moving average under 20. You want to see it holding there. And each day, the worst case is that you get a bit of a mixed market, but at least two of the three major indexes are higher. Uh, that's kind of what you want to see. And at this particular point, now down, down 30, what is it, 40, uh, S&P unchanged. I, I, it's that uncertainty that we're looking at that is, you know, the market likes to climb a wall of worry. And I think that that's kind of, uh, I kind of, I think it's kind of there. So if what we're looking at is, it's the sectors. Let's just go through this. Look, the XLP, XLP trading under the, the last high that was made up in the 77s is down at the 75, 79 area right now. There has to be staples, spider fund. So the staples have been absolute real winners. This is what I'm talking about when I say a tribe. Bifurcation, no, trifurcation, if not a corfurcation, cor whatever you'd call it. Um, why? Because staples, like a Procter and Gamble, are trading um, at a down a dollar at 160.50, almost at its all time high in the 165 area. These things should be way down if we were in a recession, because in a recession, money flows from. Uh, the failure of stocks to rally, the, the, the weakness of equities into the safety of bonds. That's not happened. Look at the TLT. 
uh, the TLT. I mean, give me a break. This should have been with the market being shaking like this. Money should have pushed the TLT up into the 148, 149 area, not 138. Uh, this is just this is just saying yields are going high. The market does, but then the market gets used to whatever it is, and it figures out a way to 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 work within those confines. That's what I'm looking at. So I'm just saying that. Uh, we're looking at such a mixed market that you've got to try to be in the right sectors. Now, let me show you this. I, I, I wanted to do this uh, for my subscribers over the weekend. I, I didn't want to take too much time, so I skipped it. I, I said I'll do some more on Monday in my show. And look at this. This is the RTH. This is the Van Eck Vector. Uh, this is the retail ETF. 20% is Amazon. Look at its held. It's still so weak. It's the, the daily is in a sell mode. The weekly is in a sell mode. And then monthly, we've seen a number of charts like this. It's not quite a Chapman Wave Roman candle right here, but it, it doesn't look great. Um, that's just saying that people are not buying the way they had going into um, that October, November period. But look at this the XRT, which is equal weighted so that Amazon doesn't distort, has a slightly worse chart formation obviously, because Amazon is such a big weighting and was such a big winner and now has just kind of has gone sideways with the big pop lately. What we're looking at is 78.90 at 41, stuck in the range. But there's a really good chance, and that's the reason why I couldn't become just overly, uh, just rip-roaringly bullish. I have to say, let's temper that bullish. We only have long stocks for my opening call newsletter. Uh, we also have... We've added value to it. And look at this. Um, it's just stuck in the lower range. This is the S&P ETF XRT. And it's not going anywhere. Sell mode in the daily, sell mode in the weekly. And yes, it's made a peak C, not a D, at the top, uh, that all-time high, which was at 104.31 on the 17th of November. But yet, it's shown no strength at all. And that's the reason why it's very selective that you've got to be right here. I want to do a couple of things here. Also, um, Amgen with earnings out, I think, after the bell. Amgen, here's the dreaded H pattern, uh, trading at 221.82, down 30 cents. Uh, a number of people, I, I don't know if I want to make this a, a, a formula that we're using, 22915, 22920. Um, in my uh, in my show, um, I, I was ages ago. I could have shown all the IBD investors business daily uh, stocks, the, um, the top fifty, and then I thought I don't want to get locked into doing everything the same time, same way, every, uh, all, all the time. So I don't want to get locked in. But someone, a number of people, actually not someone, but many people have said, "Hey, we've got all these earnings coming out." Every week, why don't you just run with your Chapman Wave methodology? Why don't you just run these charts? Because the way the stocks act and react after earnings, before and after earnings, there are so many factors. Just one word can change the thing from uh, after the bell being up 12%. And then with the uh, conference call, all of a sudden it opens the next day and it starts to sink. And you could have done all your homework. I, I'd prefer not to do that. But what I do want to do is a number of uh, um, questions have come in, and I'm going to uh, I'm going to do that. So Tesla, here we go. Tesla, did I? Yes, I did finish all the other. Tesla is. God, we've seen this pattern so often. Peak A off the low of 7.92 on the 24th. Now it's in leg B. But this is a sell mode in the daily, sell mode in the weekly. Not yet given a signal in the monthly, but it's it's kind of close to if it slips under seven, if there's a close under seven seventy seven eighty five at any point in the next two weeks, Tesla's having a big problem, and that could be what I'm talking about. That could be part of this whole thing that we're looking at um, just. From the ports, the shipping situation, it could be backlog, it could be anything. Could be the, it could even be the semiconductors. I don't know, but I'm saying this is not great action. It's fantastic action when you think of a stock that's gone from uh, double digits all the way to 1,243.49. 
in November, in the week of November the 5th. And it's only back down at the 800, down 300 points. So that's what, 14, 15%. But at the same time, um, it has been one of the leaders. All right. So now th there are a couple of things that I want you to look at. So oh, I didn't finish with the VIX index. If the VIX index does actually start to rally today, I think actually the VIX index is more on its way down than on the way up at this particular point. There's a 2308. If it does, instead of going down to 2280 as the general market, the market starts to trade, finally it's had that weakness we looked at from the Chatham Wave trend gauge, and now we're looking at some kind of strength coming in. If the if the Dow gets to a plus 65 at any point and then holds in after 130, that's going to be good. You should see the VIX index pull back. S&P is now 10.70, and I'll be back in a moment. There's a lot now to discuss. We finished our preamble, and let me just show you the opening right now. There it is, the brand new leg in the front of the chart. We still look at that 10 foot chart break above the high. It's 5 and area. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other tigers and tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money back back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels. And make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back, and I'm just typing in the notation the chef wave methodology of the TRS person in the den about Beatrice uh, Inc. Uh, generic meds, I also believe uh, a lot to do with eyes. Uh, we're looking at a high that was made back on the January the 11th at 15.34. At and then on the 2nd of February, it went to 15.33. I, I, I've been looking at this so many times now. So many charts have this double top formation. 
And we have to see whether it breaks out or not. Sometimes it's high, sometimes it's as low as double bottoms. But when it is in the daily chart, and it's going to impact the weekly chart by popping into leg B with the technicals very strong, I have to consider that the, you have to skip the daily and say, this is starting to show the kind of strength on the technical side in the weekly, the larger time frame, that is very positive. That doesn't mean to say it couldn't slip down a point. After all, it's, it's kind of like, almost like, a, it's not biotech, but it's in that area, Via, Viatris uh, Inc. And what I do like about it is that it's coming off, it was an IPO, an IPO back in 2020, was it November? Yep, November, uh, it drops to 15.35. Usually they have round numbers, not a single round number, and it pops up the next month, and it goes to 16.88, still no round number, and then it starts on its way down. And what was the low on the uh, in December? was 11.96, still no round number for an IPO. <laughs> That's really unusual. And this just says to me, from the bank D being flat in the daily chart and the stochastic being flat at 88%, that this is, this is fine buyers. So uh, this is one where, uh, Peaky, in your particular case, I think this is where you start your position and you try to build a position. You like the longer-term outlook, and the longer-term outlook says, as long as it's, doesn't break for a week, for a day or two, that's okay. The 14.25, 200 period moving average, as long as it really does, I mean, that's almost a point down. That's a, that's a big percentage, but I know that you'd look, like to scale in and scale out. I'm considering that there's a good chance that it was a peak G at that high that back in um, January. It pulled back under the 200 period moving average, and there's a chance now if the stochastic, you know, a flat stochastic, when it's just barely above the nine, it can stay that way for a long time. It's almost like a rectangle form formation, and this could turn into rectangle formation. Could a good got a good question that I'm going to get to in a moment on gold and the rectangle formation. So I'm just saying that even if it pops above into the 1530s, 1540s. It has to really get to the 1570s to say, I'm done with this rectangle. And then I'm in a, peak, a brand new peak, A, peak B, starting a brand new leg C, and I'm going much higher. I like it. I do say that you've got to be a little careful because the rectangle formation says if it starts to pull back, 1492 will be key near-term support. But I would start the position. In your case, it's exact, this is exactly what you like. There's a company that's starting to do well. The monthly chart says it's turned the corner it doesn't mean to say it's out of the woods, but it says you've got very clear parameters because if at any point in February it can close above the high of the week of the 11th of June, 15.92, then immediately that high of 15 point, sorry, 16.29 becomes a target, and that was the high of the week of the 21st of May. So you can go step by step, and you can see all the different support levels right there in the in the 15 to 14.80 area. So, so far, that's exactly good. And I'm going to write it down as one that I, I would like to watch. I don't know if we'll do anything with it, but I'm going to watch it. Beatrice Peaky's suggestion. Okay, now... Uh, yeah, so now the next thing is uh, Jimmy wants to know, Basil, is gold an example of long-term rectangle pattern lasting longer than patience? GLD 20-point range for two years and 60-point range over five-plus years. So if the stock was trading at 18, I would say, yep, but you're absolutely correct. Let's go to the GLD. GLD is the, it trades at one-tenth the price of uh, gold. I happen to like the IAU whenever we go into gold itself. We use the IAU, which is one-tenth the price of the one-tenth of GLD. Um, it's trading right now at 34.52, up 14 uh, cents. The GLD is trading at, uh, let's see, 169.55, up 0.69 up 0.41 percent so you get the same percentage over there now what i am looking oh dow's up 127 that's exactly what we looked at and what we were looking at is to buy a particular issue which we i we missed only on friday because at, with it i i showed uh, in my overview that at like 18 18 at uh, 18 minutes past eight i was about to send out buys my my traders corner and i had to buy this particular stock under a certain level 
And I just, I looked at the market and I said, we've already got one buy. We've got one that's probably going to be taken out. Um, oh, you know, just let's be cautious. And I took it out just like that. Boom. And um, it had a fabulous day. That particular issue did exactly what we wanted. So today we got into it on a dip. And it's now up. Um, the day is young, but it's up one and a half percent. That's exactly the action we wanted. The very select moves in very select areas. So now let's go back to the GLD. Uh, the reason why I brought that up was just to say that how select this market is. And then I saw that Dow was up 120, S&P's up 19. So what we're looking at is gold. Now look, look. If you, let's get the big picture. The big picture says sell mode in the monthly chart of the GLD. Why? Because, let me just get rid of that plus sign, I haven't updated this for a little while, that high that was made back in, I think it was February. Look at that long-legged, uh, August, I'm sorry, August of 2020, 194.45, August, so let me write this down. 194.25, 8, 2000 and I think I said 20 right here yeah, 20 all right and it goes into red so it pulls back not a big deal from the 194 level to the 159 40 points I mean not for, for a commodity you kind of see that very often but but just chart wise that's a pretty big percentage and look what's happened you outlying a ring instead of the the cup formation when you break the cup formation by going sideways it means that what you've done is you've taken the potential for moving up, or if it was an arch formation down, and you've used, usurped energy both up and down, and you're now just going sideways. That sideways action has gone on basically uh, for, for a year and a half just on this particular pattern. I don't want to go all the way to 194 because that was a high, but I'm just looking at it on a monthly basis. And that's it. To make it as simple as possible for gold to break out, I think it's holding very well, but I just don't think it's going anywhere right now. It's in a trading range. Gold, first of all, has to close above the high of January of this year with a high of 173.35. That's that high, everything was the 23rd or 24th. 25th, 25th of January. It has to close above that. And it has to close above that in a weekly chart. And what that does is it takes the uh, the daily, uh, sorry, it takes the weekly and goes from peak A, gray peak A, to gray peak B. It's in a double leg C to the upside right now, peak C. And you have to confirm, because I think it's about 170, uh, go above 170. On a closing basis, it's going to be a real quick high above that peak. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. 
Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. I'm going to back. I just want to finish this up quickly. Look, so the GLD, I did go to a PE and the daily chart, round about, as I say, was it 25th or something? It pulled back pretty sharply from the 173s down to the 166s. And now it's running it's in a, in a gray leg B up. And I just think that at this particular point, it's just kind of stuck for the moment. But, and this is going to be really important because if you're looking at the dot, oh, why do you type it on there? Okay, if we're looking at the dollar, there we go, uh, DXY, if you're looking at the dollar, this decline, and I have to, I, I should put that in just to make it clear. It was, I thought it could be a leg C, but I said there's a chance you could grab that, that previous way back uh, peak D and use it as an E. Whatever it is, I said that Doja candle, if it pulls back sharply, it has all the characteristics with the stochastic going quickly over 80% and then immediately down within three, four, five bars. That's a terrible, uh, terrible uh, situation. So I think the dollar is now in a digestive phase. Our long dollar from 90.07, watch it go to 102.99, watch it come back to 89.21 and then rally back again. Um, I treat this as a, an icon of American economy more than anything else, more than just a currency. And we'll see what happens here. Yeah, this is the big thing. Why? Uh, I'm just going to deviate for a minute because, I, you know, I like to use stepping stones from one thing that, that leads directly to another. Well, look at this. The HGX. We're going to get. Why am I not getting this? HGX, please come in nicely. They are. The HGX, the Philadelphia Housing Sector Index, this big double top, it actually looks, this doji candle B looks like the dollar, where it's an alternate count, but I have to call it a B. There's no other count. Um, it looks like a D, but it looks to me like it could pull back very sharply with an arch formation, the dreaded H in the monthly chart, a peak C failure under the peak G that was made back at the high that was 530. No, that was way back. That was back here. That was the high that was made back at about 500, back in August of 2020. Now look at this. So 20 or 20, yeah, 2020, 20, 2021. And then it bounces back and goes to 531 at a peak D, pulls back. Look at this dreaded H pattern. What's the dreaded H pattern on the Chapman Way methodology? I look at two major uh, trends, trend, trend lines, trend patterns. Straight line up, straight line down, cup formation, arch formation, or a mix of one and two or one and three. One and three, one and three is the dreaded H because it's red. If it takes out that left side low, look what happened there. Dreaded H pattern fails miserably. Takes out the left side low and goes very sharply lower. That's what we're looking at. This is what I'm worried about. And that was a couple of questions came in. I'll deal with them all at once. So I'm going to go back to gold, but I want to talk about patterns that you can consider a rectangle. Look, this could be a rectangle formation in the Philadelphia housing sector index going from that high that was made, what did I say, somewhere like May of 2021 in the 530 area, then a retest. So now what we're looking at is 
there could be a rectangle formation here where it goes from a cup formation to a second cup formation, like a pair of uh, bi bi uh, bifocals or something, uh, or reading glasses. Um, and that says, be careful here, because look at this, Toll Brothers, uh, a high-end um, Humboldt, makes an all-time high in the 75.61, uh, 13th of December, plummets down to the 60, uh, 54s, that's twenty. That's twenty points. That's a that's a big move down, and it doesn't look like it's done. Chapman wave peak D's. You got to be careful. Peak D in the weekly. It looks like it could be an alternate count in the uh, monthly. I'm not going to deal with the, the Chapman wave notation other than to say it looks like that could be a, not just a C but even a G in the monthly chart. But let's just make it simple. If in the next two weeks you see. Toll Brothers trading under it's so a 54.96 trading under 52. The selectivity of the market is saying there's a sector that is under pressure because of the higher yields. Look at um, Hov Hovnanian, same thing, uh, makes a high of 133. That beautiful double top that I've been talking about, 133.99, December the 13th. A week or two later, it goes to 133.27, less than a dollar from that high, makes a cup formation and plummets down below the 200 period moving average to 93. 40 points, I mean, that's just a big deal. We've got um, Toll Brothers. Um, there's one I just always forget for some reason, one one of the ones I love, and I'm, I'm forgetting it. So Toll, of BZH, Visa Homes. Look at this, Visa Homes. The dreaded H just took it out on Friday. It's lower now. Now from the 24 area down to 17. Bees are homes. I, we're looking at A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Tom, why am I forgetting one? This one that I, I always use. Um, and it's a really important home build. All right, I'll, I'll find it in a moment. Tom, uh, H, M. No, it doesn't matter. Oh, Lenar. There you are. Lenar Len. And I should remember L-E-N -L -E for the for the Lenar Corporation housing. Remember Len from Cape Coral. Uh, we always exchange uh, uh, New Year's greetings. Um, he was he was I've never known anyone in the housing market like him. Way back in the crash of 2000, he had been building up houses between his son and himself in Chicago and Cape Cor Coral uh, area for years and years. And then he sold almost at the top. And then back in 2007, I spoke to him at one of our last meetings down in Florida in the Tiger Financial News conferences. And he said, yep, I've been buying again. I, I sold just like I'm getting houses back at the prices that I sold, uh, that I bought them for way back before. And he did that, and I can't, yeah, he just, Len, from Cape Coral. Hi, Len. I don't know if you ever listen to TFN anymore with all your, your just your hundreds and hundreds of, of um, rentals. Congratulations. So, Lenar, I don't know what he has anything to do with Lenar. It doesn't matter. He's independent. Lenar Corporation trading up 36 cents at 90.66. Look at another dreaded H here. That goes from 117 down to the 89s. That's a pretty big pullback. So I'm watching this to do with the TLT because look at the TLT down again, down 36 cents at 138.86. So um, uh, someone sent in saying, um, wh why are you looking at Disney, a company with no earnings? Why do you keep talking about it? A good comparison would be to look at the home builders and interest. Coincidentally, that's exactly what I've just done. Uh, it's been 12 years since interest rates have risen. Why don't you do a study looking back in history? Uh, believe me, I, any, anybody's done work on on the rates and, and, and the effects in the market, I've done tons and tons. So that's not the issue. The issue is going to be how does the market ameliorate? How does it how does it, like it always does, how does it find the pockets of strength? Like I spoke about the IAI, people are buying stocks. That's why the uh, the, uh, the broken security index is moving higher. This is, there's no other reason, right? Uh, and the other thing is, look at the housing. We just looked at it. Yes, I agree. Housing is coming down because rates are going up. But what, am I going to exclude uh, a stock that goes from uh, Amazon that goes from way back when it was having just terrible, it was just plowing money back into its business and really the profits were just pathetic when you looked at it because the way they dealt with money and the money was building an empire 
he had no earnings. He would have lost half. He didn't buy it. Uh, way back in the triple digits, so now in the high four digits. Huh? That way. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks, in this last section, let me just do a couple of things. And one, one, of, the, one of the aspects that's really important, look, the S&P Biotech for the, uh, Fund uh, this is trading at 93.21, up 2.42. It's just stuck in this range. I suspect that it could have a bit of a rally, but this pattern here says, unless you treat this circle or U-shaped pattern, this consolidation phase between 95 and 93.5, as a, uh, a spring, a lotus spring that's just going to power to the upside. And I just don't see it right now because I don't think this is in the sectors that are favorable at this particular point. You would have to see 97.50 to 98.50 by Wednesday or Thursday. If that happens, it's going to be in play. So I'll do the same thing with IBB, same thing. IBB needs to get to the, it's a 131. This is the NASDAQ biotech. It needs to be in the 137.5 to 138.5 area. And really soon, then it's going to be, uh, uh, it'll be attractive to fund managers. XBI, uh, sorry, that's XBI. The question I had was, where did I go? Where did it go? Where did it go? Oh, so I said to subscribers in my overview over the weekend, we always do a very thorough overview. I said, let's keep an eye on the Bitcoin because that's going to outpace gold. That's so far the pattern that's working much better. And look at it today, up 3,210 at 43,850. We still have a little bit left, but we, we, I wanted, there's a particular uh, stock that we 
that I had focused on for a couple of, quite a few weeks, months in fact. And I said, this particular stock is where we'll go if we like it. And the Dawn stock, ah, it's, uh, it was trading in the single digits. And I said, this is it. And it's up huge today. That's the way we wanted to play it. I have to now wait for a pullback to see if it's possible. This is what you wanted to see in the IBB, breaking above that rectangle formation. It's not done yet, but this is the way you want to come out of the box. So keep an eye on Bitcoin. There, there, there is something there. Big resistance at 40, uh, 45,400, the 200 period moving average is at 43,865. I'm thinking it's just real close to a little bit of a pullback, and then we have to decide is this now in play again or not? So, with that said, what's the VIX index? What's the sustaining move after 130 in the market? They have 